Which is the right major for you, electrical or industrial engineering? This is what we will be talking about today, but before we get started, please don't forget to smash the bell and subscribe button so you don't miss out on any future content just like this that are going to lead you to success. Obviously, there's no right or wrong answer when it comes to what our passion is, but a lot of the times that might be unknown until a later stage in our life. So it's important to understand all the implications that come with choosing a specific major. Electrical and industrial engineering are two of the main branches of engineering. And I gotta admit that both seem like attractive majors on paper. But well, let's dive deeper into the curriculum, job outlook, salary, and prestige to see if these majors are really as attractive as they appear to be so you can make an educated decision for yourself and not have any regrets about dropping 100 grand on a wrong degree after college. Let's start off with an easy question. If you've taken physics class in high school, try to remember if you enjoy the electricity and magnetism portion. If your answer is yes in designing and analyzing the electrical hardware and circuitry and products like iPhones, cars, and airplanes sounds interesting to you, then electric Electrical engineering is probably a good choice. On the flip side, if physics is not really your thing, but solving math problems including linear algebra, statistics, and calculus is more attractive to you, and improving a business or manufacturing process to save time, money, and materials sounds cool, then industrial engineering is likely right for you. Now in order to determine if electrical or industrial engineering is a better fit for you, we must first know exactly what these two things are. So what in the world is electrical engineering? It's a very versatile branch of engineering focusing on the study, design, and application of devices and systems which use electricity, electronics, and electromagnetism such as electric motors, radar and navigation systems, communication systems, and power generation equipment spanning the aerospace, automotive, construction, consumer electronics, defense, food, medical, and energy industries. Now let's talk about industrial engineering. What in the world is that? It's a specialized discipline that involves predicting, evaluating, and optimizing any process or system such as a manufacturing line, a supply chain network, or even the layout of an emergency room floor at a hospital using math, engineering analysis, and design principles. Industrial engineers are essential to making any complex process involving people, money, knowledge, information, and equipment more efficient such that an organization can maximize profit or minimize costs. As an industrial engineer, you will be able to work in a wide array of industries including but not limited to aerospace, automotive, food, medical, consumer electronics, defense, finance, and manufacturing. Now that you have a high level understanding of these two disciplines, how does the curriculum for these two majors stack up against each other? As you probably can guess, both electrical and industrial engineering students take the general set of engineering core courses during their freshman and sophomore year like math, which includes calculus one and two, multivariate calculus, differential equations, statistics, linear algebra, physics one, which is mechanics, and physics two, which is electricity and magnetism, as well as basic chemistry. Moving on to the common engineering courses between these two majors, you will have to take programming with a common language such as MATLAB or Python for solving engineering problems and an introduction design course intended to build a problem-solving mindset, computer skills, and familiarity with elements of engineering design. From this point on, the courses between these two majors will begin to diverge and become more specialized. So as an electrical engineering major, you will take electromagnetic systems covering time-varying electric and magnetic fields, Maxwell equations, electromagnetic waves, remote sensing applications, radio frequency coaxial cables, optical fibers, microwave sources and resonators, antennas, and wireless communication systems. Signals and systems class will involve tons of math and introduce continuous and discrete time signals and systems, convolution sum and integral, stability of systems, frequency domain analysis, filtering and sampling, Laplace and Z transform and linear feedback systems. You will also take intro to electronics that talks all about diodes, different types of circuits like bipolar junction transistor and metal oxide semiconductor field effect transistor, amplifiers, digital inverters and logic gates, biasing and small signal analysis, as well as microelectronic design techniques. 
Intro to Logic Design will be another required course that introduces hardware building blocks used in digital computers, such as Boolean algebra, combinatorial and sequential circuits, decoders and encoders, multiplexers, programmable logic devices, read-only memory, counters, and Verilog hardware description language. Like all engineering majors, you'll take a year-long senior design team-based project design course where you will work in teams comprised of three to five students with a potential mix of electrical and computer engineering majors and a company to solve a problem in some area of electrical engineering. For example, this group of electrical engineering students at my school created a device leveraging image processing circuits, sensors, and a web app together with a medical company to treat jaundice in infants using blue photolight therapy. You'll also generally have to take three to five mandatory electives from a list of classes. And if you're interested, here is the list of courses that we could take at my school. So as an industrial engineering major, you will have to take a lot of classes with math, operations, and human factors as the focus. In the second year, you will have to take courses like economic decision making, introducing the relationship between time and money, business operations, financial valuation, cash flow analysis, and accounting principles. You'll also take operations modeling that will teach you how to mathematically model decisions with varying levels of uncertainty and solve these models using optimization, statistical models, and queuing processes. We also have human factors and ergonomics class introducing how to evaluate and design a product, process, or system to work more efficiently with humans and improve the overall user experience. For example, this class will come in handy if you were asked to improve the efficiency of a manufacturing line as an industrial engineer. Some questions you might need to answer include how much space do you want to give between assemblers, where do you want to place the arbor press or SMT machine in relation to the worker, and where you want to include windows in the factory. This class will present problems involving computer displays, illumination, eye-hand coordination, as well as repetitive and high physical effort tasks. Moving on to junior year, you have to take some type of optimization and computational methods class emphasizing decision making for real world applications from transportation, healthcare, and other industrial domains using optimization models, computation algorithms and programming. Next is intro to Markov processes, which in layman terms is a way to describe and predict a real world process such as a manufacturing line or traffic jam using math such as statistics and calculus. It's actually a very useful course that is used to solve common challenges faced by many businesses relating to reliability, maintenance, inventory, production, and queues. You should also expect to take a data analytics tools and techniques course teaching how to clean, manipulate, and prepare data for visualization as well as basic inferential statistical analysis and predictive analytics using Python. Finally, as a senior, there will almost always be some type of advanced simulation class covering complex discrete event systems with applications in industrial and service organizations. Topics include modeling and programming simulations using a high-level computer package such as ProModel or GPSSH. Like every engineering major, there will be a final senior design course where you work on a semester-long design project and industrial and operations engineering with a team that's generally sponsored by a company. So the question to ask yourself is, are you more interested in the design, development, and testing of rigid and flexible PCB technology, hardware, power, and control systems, and using oscilloscopes and other tools to debug subsystems in, say, an iPad or Boeing 747? Or are you more interested in process design and optimization using simulation tools and math to help an organization like a factory, bank, or even even restaurant maximize profits and minimize waste. So now that we have a good sense of the curriculum, let's compare the annual salaries and see what the current and future job outlook looks like for these two types of engineers. Let's begin with the salary breakdown for electrical engineers. We see that the median salary is $103,390, while the lowest 10% and highest 10% made $64,870 and $159,520 respectively. Obviously, things like years of experience and work location will contribute to this salary gap, so someone with 10 plus years experience working in California or New York will probably be amongst the top 5% of earners. 
positions. The total number of available electrical engineering jobs in 2020 was 313,200, and it's expected to see a 7% increase in job growth between 2020 and 2030, which is average. Now moving on to industrial engineering, we see that the median salary is $95,300, while the lowest 10% and highest 10% made $60,850 and $129,620 respectively, and the median salary of electrical engineers is about $8,000 more than that of industrial engineers. The total number of available industrial engineering jobs in 2020 was 292,000, which is slightly less than electrical engineering, but still great and it's expected to see a 14% increase in job growth between 2020 and 2030, which is exceptional and way above average compared to electrical in the overall field of engineering. Job security is something you will not have to worry about for either industrial or electrical engineering. Aside from the curriculum, salary, and job outlook, the last component we'll look at is prestige. For some people, it's all about the respect. Now the way I have to find prestige is how well known is the company you work at, and I assume that the larger the company, the more prestige it has. For all intents and purposes, we'll assume that the job title is not correlated with prestige. Consequently, I have evaluated prestige solely based on the total number of top 100 Fortune 500 companies that offer electrical and industrial engineering jobs. It came down to the wire and here are the results. 38 out of the 100 companies offered electrical engineering jobs, including Amazon, Apple, Alphabet, Exile Mobile, AT&T, Microsoft, Verizon, Ford Motor, General Motors, Comcast, Chevron, Dell, Marathon, Facebook, Johnson & Johnson, General Electric, Intel, Procter & Gamble, Lockheed Martin, Valero Energy, Boeing, HP, Raytheon, Tyson Foods, Pfizer, Caterpillar, Oracle, Dow, General Dynamics, Northrop Grumman, John Deere, Abbott Laboratories, Exelon, Coca-Cola, Honeywell, Thermo Fisher, 3M, and Tesla. By contrast, 54 out of the 100 companies offered industrial engineering jobs, including Walmart, Amazon, Apple, CVS Health, United Health Group, McKesson, Amerisource Bergen, Kroger, Ford, GM, Chevron, Target, Citigroup, Meta, UPS, Johnson & Johnson, General Electric, Intel, Procter & Gamble, PepsiCo, FedEx, Philips 66, Lockheed Martin, Disney, Archer Daniels Midland, Albertsons, Valero Energy, Boeing, HP, Raytheon, Cisco, Morgan Stanley, HCA Healthcare, Cisco, Charter Communications, Merck, Public Supermarkets, Allstate, Tyson Foods, Pfizer, Caterpillar, Oracle, American Express, General Dynamics, Nike, Northrop Grumman, John Deere, Abbott Laboratories, Exelon, Coca-Cola, Honeywell, Thermo Fisher, 3M, and Tesla. All right, summarizing everything we talked about. The curriculum for electrical and industrial engineering are neck and neck in terms of difficulty. What's common between these two majors is the math and engineering problem solving mindset. While electrical engineering classes focus on equipping students with knowledge in the design and development of electrical devices and products, Industrial engineering classes are geared towards students wishing to gain expertise rooted in math and simulation, as well as modeling tools to design, predict, and optimize processes. Moving on to salary, electrical engineers have the potential of making more money compared to industrial engineers, where the median salary for electrical engineers is $103,390, while for industrial engineers, it's $95,400. Obviously, if you work at one of the big tech companies, you will make a lot more and these numbers are no longer accurate, but in general, they hold true for most companies. Finally, the job security and prestige level that comes with both disciplines is insanely good, and you have no issues finding a job at a big name company, regardless of which one you decide to pursue. At the end of the day, the goal is to pick a major that you can build a career out of and enjoy doing for a lifetime. There's really no right or wrong answer when it comes to choosing electrical or industrial engineering. You might be someone who already knows that your dream job is to work at Apple as an electrical engineer to design printed circuit boards and flex cables that go into an iPhone 20. Or you want to work at Tesla as an industrial engineer to design and optimize their material flow process at their Gigafactory in Nevada. 
I think knowing what you want already in college is fantastic, but rarely is this the case and more often times than not, you won't know exactly what you want until after working several full-time jobs or internships. If this applies to you, then I definitely recommend going with electrical engineering because the compensation and job security have a slight edge over industrial engineering and it will be easier for you to transition into an industrial engineering role if you do decide to change your mind later on in your career. All right, as always, thank you so much for watching. And if you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace.